Ms. Wisniewski, you claim that both of your parents are the reason you grew up in a very unstable home. You say that your mother, Ms. Cortez, was extremely promiscuous and she pushed away your alleged father when you were very young. You also say you've never been sure that Mr. Wisniewski, who is joining us today from his hometown, is your biological father. You claim you've waited 25 years to get that answer and will finally learn the truth today. Mrs. Cortez, you argue that it wasn't your behavior that pushed your daughter's alleged father away, but instead it was his fault that she had a tumultuous childhood. You say he never believed he was the father and you had to force him to take responsibility for her. Now, Mr. Wisniewski, you claim you are not Ms. Wisniewski's biological father and say you left her mother because she slept around. You also say you believe your alleged daughter's desire to name you as father is financially motivated. Now, Ms. Wisniewski, please explain to the court why you are blaming your mother and alleged father for why you're here today. My mother was a whore when she was with my dad and she slept around and that's the reason why my mom and my so-called father had broken up and I want to know who my dad is because I don't know who he is if this is my dad or another gym was another my dad my mom's been with several other gyms in my life and it's confused me from growing up explain to me what it was like growing up without this knowledge that so many of us take for granted it is very difficult there's many things that I missed out on. It's more of the daughter-father support that I needed in my life. They both were selfish. They could care less about me or my siblings. Mrs. Cortez, how does it feel to hear your daughter speak that way about you? Um, it's very hurtful. Please explain to us the circumstances as to why this beautiful young woman doesn't know who her father is. Um, because I made mistakes, and um, yes, I did have an affair, um, but it, he also had affairs. So now, Mr. Wisniewski, can you please explain why you doubt? I have doubts because uh, while we were together, I was in the military and uh, went ahead and, you know, I don't mind people buying drinks for ladies in bars free and stuff like that anyway, because that's what they do. Bottom line being is that she's an alcoholic. And here she is in a bar hitting up people for drinks. Then I would have people showing up to my house, uh, knocking on my door, asking, uh, where's Sharon? And I'd always play that's, it off as that's, being, that's, I, I don't, excuse that's me, a, I'm that's talking. a lie. I'm talking, Your Honor. quiet. Just one second, you know, just one second. Now, we need this, this you all to speak one at a time. M Mr. Wisniewski, please continue. The, the, and well, you I, I felt would, doubtful because of Mrs. Cortez's actions. Yeah, I definitely do because of... Uh, I had people actually coming over to my house, knocking on my door, and then I would turn around and I would uh, say, excuse me, I played off like I was the roommate instead of uh, uh, actually her husband. You would act like you were her roommate? Yeah, and then I'd find out names and people would be coming on over and... Uh, Ms. Cortez, is this true? No. Please. That part is not true. The part well, about the tell bar. Tell us what is the truth. The, as you the see part it. about the bar is true, but that was a setup because I was more or less was a drink hustler, not a man hustler, because I like to drink. And I, a but lot of, you do admit to having infidelities. Specifically, what happened was um, on the way home from work one night, we were having an argument, and he threw me out of the car. At, it was late hey, at night. Wait a minute. You're supposed to be and I had, You should be lying. I had somebody um, pick up. me up because they saw me crying and very upset. Was it a stranger or someone you knew? I didn't know that person. Okay. And then what happened? Just, just we got whore. to know each other. And they... Uh, That's part of the consoling? Yeah, and it's not an O oh, either. What we is it? We got to know each other and then, you know, I had an affair and that was a one-time thing with him. So One time thing, it was that seven years. would be why Mr. Wisniewski has doubts. Am I correct? Correct. Mr. Wisniewski, yes, sir. This honor. is the situation that created the doubt in your mind. Correct. Mrs. Cortez, you say he also was cheating on you. Yes, Your Honor. No, I've never cheated. Oh yeah. I've okay. never cheated. The thing is, is that I'm all about customer service. I'm all about customer relations and everything. I might be flirtatious. 
but I've never cheated on her, ever. All right. I want to go back to the day Christina was born. Mr. Wisniewski was there, am I correct? Yes. We were at the hospital together. He was uh, with me when I, when I had her. It was your thoughts that he was most certainly her father? Yes, Your Honor. You had no doubts? I had no doubts. Mr. Wisniewski, did you have doubts when you were at the hospital? I did have doubts, but because of the fact is that I'm in there, and I was in it for the, the long term anyway, and I figured here she was, was my wife, so I, I just went with the flow. So you felt like, I'm not sure if this child is really mine because I know there's been an affair, but since yeah, I'm... I felt like this. I felt like this year, you know, when uh, the divorce came up and everything else, then I decided, you know, to let all my true feelings out. But, and I mean, when you filed for divorce, ultimately, your statement to the court says that you asked for a DNA test, right? If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And when you filed for divorce, ultimately, your statement to the court says that you asked for a DNA test, right? That is correct. And don't lie on this, Sharon. You know it. You know I it. I don't 100%. recall that, Your Honor. Yes, I you don't do. recall that. You don't recall the a, conversation. You're such a holy no, roller, girl. Not at all. You're supposed to be the holy roller. Don't be lying. You change your life over to Christ. You change your life. If over I don't to recall God. something, I don't recall something. No. So you don't remember this conversation. No, I do not. You know okay. It. You know it. Your understanding was, I want a DNA test, but yeah. she wouldn't give it. Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Wisniewski, yes. They both miss big parts of my life, and it's been very painful. I just want to know who my dad is, and my mom really wasn't the greatest mother in the world. <laughs> and you missed everything, too. This right here could be your grandson. Does this, does this, does this matter to you? Well, you know, the thing being is that, you know, when you... When she was born, Christine you know, was born. You didn't even miss him. Even, you missed the birth of him. Does that matter to you? Do you, do you even care that he's four years old? He laughs kind of like you. When I hear you on the phone, he has your laugh. And then yeah, you sit well, there and you're going to deny laugh. him? A laugh, really? a laugh. I mean, this, is, your, is, a this is a child here. You messed up on my life. You can't even come around and, 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 and Look, be a grandfather. You know, you're almost 50 years old. Like you don't even him. You missed my life. And you know what? Yeah. You're just wrong for that. Even well, if you thought is, you had an you know, obligation, you thought you had an obligation to be my dad back when you were married with my mother, then you should have had an obligation to stick through it. Yeah, if I was the father and if I was proved to be the father back then, we would have never lost out on time like this. It's all her fault. Ms. Wisniewski, your understanding was that this was your father. Yes, Your Honor. I've seen pictures of the marriage together, you know, so I knew growing up that this man that I don't know is my dad. But then other people are telling me, well, why don't you call me dad? You know, why don't you call me dad? So you think Mr. Wisniewski is your father? I'm But you really so. don't have a relationship no. with him. No. But people show you a picture and they say, this is your father. Yeah. Your Honor. And as a young girl, you don't know what to think. Exactly. You wrote a letter to your parents. Yes, I and did, And you actually. submitted it to the court. Do you have that letter? Yes, I do, Your Honor. May I Can read it? Can you read that, please? Yes. You wrote a letter to your parents. Yes, I did, actually. And you submitted actually. it to the court. Do you have that letter? Yes, I do, Your Honor. May I read Can it? Can you read that, please? Yes. Dear so-called parents, it's been over 20 years since I have been able to talk to both of you at the same time. My whole life, I've been suffering from your stupid and selfish decisions. I want to tell you how much you have hurt me, and all I wanted was to be loved and accepted. I wish that you, you would understand the pain of being thrown away like trash. I wish you could, like, one day be in my shoes. Mom, I blame you for Jim leaving. And I could care less if you're even in my life. I don't even want you in it, actually. I live better without you. I'm happy to know that I'll never be like any of you. Because I'm a better person than that. You know, I feel your pain and uh, 
Wow. It, this is so difficult because I see you and I understand what you've been through. The only reason why I had a chance to even get to know my dad when I was about eight years old, I found a, I found a number in my mom's black book that said Jim Wisniewski. I kind of got the figure that maybe that is my dad. Wow. So I called up that number, Your Honor, and I said, well, I really want to get to know you. Can we set up something? And I was eight years old at that time. Why should have I been the one at eight years old to want to get to know my dad? Why couldn't I have weekend visits like normal divorced children have? Mr. Wisniewski, why is that? If during the divorce you had this child at issue, why not go through and establish visitation? And yeah, what happened there? Fine. Okay, I did follow through with visitations. I did go ahead and I met. The thing is, is that when I left, her mother would always change her phone number for one. The other thing is, is that I'm not here to be played with. She knows that I am not the father. Mr. Wisniewski, I need to ask you this as well. How certain are you that you are not Ms. Wisniewski's father? 99 and 99%. You feel that certain that you are not her father? Whoa. Yes. Ms. Wisniewski. Exactly. <laughs> you know what, Your Honor? Here's something else I would really like to tell you is that Christina was a very beautiful baby, extravagant baby. She was so extravagant, I would put her in baby contest. She was an And that's baby. why I need you to understand you love this child. You put her in baby contest. She's your beautiful baby girl. And then all of a sudden, you disappear on her. And that's what her sadness, her frustration is about. Do you understand that? Yeah. Ms. Wisniewski, how does that make you feel to hear that at some point you were the apple of his eye? He's <laughs> parading you around in baby contests saying, look at my beautiful baby girl. It feels Did good, but that was picture? just a temporary thing. It, it was never, it was never, ever there after that, after so many years. Because I was getting played. I was getting toyed. No way I was going to put any kids in the relationship of being questioned and used. He thinks I'm after his money too, like an inheritance that he's supposed to be getting. I, I don't want nothing to do with him if, of money. I just want no. time. I don't Excuse want me, money. Your Honor. I just want time. Your Honor. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. She says that you feel like she's after your money. Not only mine, but my folks, okay? I mean, they got a nice, extravagant, nice motorhome. They've got their own house paid for. They yeah, got okay, but Mr. Wisniewski, Mr. Wisniewski, Your father's Mr. not Wisniewski, even around. He's dead. All, you really believe this girl is standing here in tears over a motorboat yeah. that your mama owns? Why the heck exactly. would I want a motorhome? I don't even have my that license. That doesn't even I mean, make come any on. sense. Because, because they're over there and they're hounding them because they live real. They live a lot closer than I do. And they're over there you trying know? to get their feet in the door. Mr. Wisniewski, I'm disappointed to hear that you would reduce this young woman's pain to that. Ms. Wisniewski, I need to ask you, what do you want to happen today? You have heard from your mother, your alleged father. What do you want from today? I just wanted to build a relationship with my dad that I never had, so that way I don't have to feel empty anymore. I want him to be able to come over for Christmas if he can. I, I want to have time with him that I've missed throughout these years. Just to fill the void. You know what? I, I understand where you're coming from, and that's not a lot to ask. Mr. Wisniewski, Yes, I Honor. know you have said that you believe 99.9% .9 yeah. that this child is not yours. This young exactly. woman is not your daughter. But what if she is? Then what? Yeah, if what she is, do? I mean, stories can't say enough because of all the years that are gone, the pain and everything. Things being as if she is, I'll take on responsibility. I will build a relationship with her and everything else and hopefully try to make up for some lost times. But if she's not, I can stay a friend to her. She could call me if she wants because I'm just another Jim or another Tim. You know, that's why Sharon always stuck around with all these people. They keep all right. them all within that category. All right, Mr. Wisniewski, I've heard enough. I'm ready for the results. Jerome, do you have the envelope? Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and Reads follows in the case of Wisniewski versus Cortez Wisniewski. 
When it comes to the paternity of Christina Wisniewski, Mr. Wisniewski, you are her father. So, what now? Are, what are you gonna do now? Are you, are you gonna come over for Christmas and, you know, try to play makeup or, or, or what, you know? But you can blame your mom for doing this. I mean, no, I, no, I, I no, didn't no, want to no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Mr. Wisniewski. Now, I'm tired of hearing about Mrs. Cortez now, because at this point, that's done. It is the opinion of this court is that you need to find a way to love your daughter more than you dislike Mrs. Cortez. Because every time we talk about the issues with your daughter, how to mend them, the fact that she wants you in her life, you come up talking about Mrs. Cortez. You're divorced now. It's done. Can you be a father to her? My hands are open, my heart's open to her. She's walking down to my house anytime. Very sorry that you had to go through the 25, 26 years of all this. Uh, I will be there for you for till the day I die, or you die, whichever comes first. I'll be there for you. I don't think he meant that humorously. I think he meant that he will be there for you. For life sure tells so. like now, a Mary. Mrs. Cortez, how does that feel? It's your about honor? time, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Wisniewski, I'm so happy because now you have the truth. See, now you're not coming in here saying, this person lied to me, they're selfish, they're selfish. You know what, Ms. Wisniewski? They were. <laughs> but you want your child to have the benefit of knowing it's grandparents. You want your child to have what you didn't. And that's going to require you to do some forgiving as well. Your Honor, can I hug my daughter? Court is adjourned. Yes, you may hug your daughter. <laughs>
we were sitting on the couch one day just talking and he kissed me. And I told him, you know, I have a boyfriend, we can't do this. And he just kind of shrugged it off and said, okay. Okay, so at that point, Mr. Mitchell was just your friend? Yes, Your Honor. About a week after that, we were in the pool and we were swimming under the water and he kissed me under the water and I came up and I didn't, I didn't stop it. I let it continue and we ended up, you know, we ended up having sex. All right. And so, Mr. Mitchell, do you remember when your feelings for Ms. Lohman changed <clears throat> from friends to more? Yes, Your Honor. So tell me about what you came to love about Ms. Lohman. I loved how she did stuff. I liked how she cared for me whenever I didn't have anybody that cared for me. And she said you had a very tough childhood. Is that true, honey? Yes, ma'am. I was abused. I was, had to do everything for my family. I raised my three sisters and my brother basically by myself. It was hard. I understand. So when you moved in with Ms. Lohman, it was like finding a family, a real family. Yes, Your Honor. And they took you in and you finally felt at home somewhere. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So this relationship now turned to more than a friendship. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. But you're still in a relationship with this boyfriend at the time. Am I correct, Ms. Lohman? Yes, Your Honor. So what was that situation like? He never found out, and to this day, he still doesn't know. He does not know to this day that you were also sleeping with Mr. Mitchell. Right, Your Honor. Was this just a one-time thing when you all ended up having sex, or did it continue? Um, it continued. Were you using protection? No, Your Honor. So you have an ex-boyfriend. Yes, Your Honor. Who believed that he was the father until they split and she got with Jonathan and disappeared. So when you found out you were pregnant, your ex believed it was his? Yes, Your Honor, because at the time I also thought it was his. Why did you think it was his if you knew you were also having sex with Mr. Mitchell? At the time I was with him, so I wanted to make myself believe that it was my ex's. Oh, okay, was... so you admittedly just lied to yourself and blocked out the Mr. Mitchell possibility? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Mitchell, do you remember finding out Ms. Lohman was pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. When you found that out, what were you thinking? I didn't know what to think. I, I didn't know if it was mine or his. At that point, were you, were you all dating now, you and Ms. Lohman? Yes, Your Honor. Um, no, Your Honor. I, but we were not dating at the time. I told him there was a possibility. I was still with my ex at the time. Okay. And so, this ex believed this is my child? Yes, Your Honor. You never said anything to Mr. Mitchell? No, Your Honor. Mr. Mitchell, if when you found out, you immediately thought this could be my child, did you confront Ms. Lohman and say, hey, is this my baby? Not immediately. I when did you do it? I waited a couple days and thought it over. So, Ms. Lohman, how did you finally tell Mr. Mitchell that you thought the baby could potentially be his? When I was about six weeks, um, I had went to the doctor and confirmed that I was pregnant. And then on my second doctor's appointment, I asked, you know, do you know, do you have an estimate of when I conceive? Because I can't tell you the exact date. And she told me I conceived somewhere between October 12th and October 22nd. And I got to looking back at the dates and I had had sex with Mr. Mitchell more times than I had sex with my ex. I had sex with Mr. Mitchell about every day and only once or twice with my ex. All right. I don't think that's how that works. So you, you do understand that it is not a numbers game. Yes, Your Honor. I, I don't mean it to be funny. I'm serious. You do yes, understand that. So you could have sex with someone 20 times and have sex with someone else one time. And that one time, make a baby. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. After you realized when you conceived, everything pointed to Mr. Mitchell. Yes, Your Honor. How do you tell him? We were sitting at home and I told him, I was like, there is a possibility that London could be yours and because I looked at the dates. And then after she was born, I was like, Mr. Mitchell, she looks just like you. I was like, she has your eyes, the same exact eye color. <laughs> but just because she... she has blue eyes and blonde hair doesn't mean she's mine. He yes, had to but say my ex had light blue eyes. Jonathan has dark blue eyes. London has dark blue eyes. And so all through this pregnancy, who's helping you? Mr. Mitchell is. So you're with her through this pregnancy? Yes. yes and Your you're there when the baby's born? Yes, Your yes. Honor. Do you sign the birth certificate? No, Your Honor. No, Your no, Honor. Your Honor. Um, at the time, I was confused as to who the father was, so I didn't want to put anybody on the birth certificate except myself. Okay. Well, that's responsible. So, you don't put anyone on the birth certificate, but you're still there for the baby, Mr. Yes, Mitchell. Your Honor. And the baby starts to develop, and you start comparing features. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. And so then that 
furthers your belief that Mr. Mitchell is the child's father? Yes, Your Honor. You say they have the same eyes. Yes, oh. Your Honor. All right, let's look at this. On the left is London, and on the right is Mr. Mitchell. And you believe that is an indicator that Mr. Mitchell is her biological father. Not only that, Your Honor, my ex had little to no eyelashes. Mr. Mitchell has extremely long, thick eyelashes, and my daughter London does as well. She's a girl. She can ha just get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, not, just because normal. she's a girl, a girl doesn't, doesn't mean, mean anything. She's got long lashes. Because I'm a girl. My mother's a woman. I mean, neither one of us have long lashes. So have now London is 10 months old, and Mr. Mitchell, you say you've bonded with this baby. <clears throat> Yes, Your Honor. How so? Explain to the court. I love her to death. She's oh. amazing. She's amazing, you said. Yes, Your Honor. He has been there from day one. He takes care of her. He watches her. He, he, has, he, he has become so attached to this baby, and he has treated her as if he's known all along that she is his. But the, the doubts are there, and it is better for him to know now. It's better for everybody, especially London, to know now if he is, in fact, for certain her father or if he's not. Because if it goes on for much longer, I feel like it will be more traumatic for everybody involved to find out later that he is not the father. Why do you believe he's being taken advantage of? I believe that she knows that Jonathan is going to do what is right. He loves the baby and he is going to step up and be the father that she needs. And I feel like, because she knows that, that that is why we are in the situation we are in. So you basically believe Ms. Lohman has chosen Mr. Mitchell yes. as the best of the two options. Right. Uh, well, no, the Your Honor, is no, that is not no. correct. No, Your Honor, that is not correct. I love Mr. Mitchell with everything I have. I have been his best friend since the day one I met him. I love him not because he will take care of London. I love him because he is my best friend. She doesn't treat me like she does, though. She certainly doesn't talk to him like she does. You don't always treat her right, either. But I treat her better than she does me. Not always. The point is this. You say you love this man, and you say you truly believe he's London's biological father. My question is this. Is your belief that he's London's biological father rooted in the fact that you love him so much? Or, as she just said, you feel like he's gonna do right by the baby. No, what I'm saying is both of those two arguments, you understand, have absolutely no bearing on the paternity question. Yes, Your Honor. If your belief is based on the conception dates, now that's something we can talk about. If it's just based on a want and a love, that's not how it works in this courtroom. Mr. Mitchell has testified that he has a beautiful, loving relationship with London. I have to ask, what is your ex doing? Absolutely nothing with his life. We have no idea where he's I, even at. I have no contact with him. I even tried to speak to his, his father, and his father has no idea. He hasn't seen him in six months. Oh, goodness. We don't know where he's at. I, he will not talk to me. Um, he has told all his friends, do not let them... He won't let me get in contact with him to get into in contact with him. I've tried, you know, just, just to get in contact with him and be like, hey, you know, we need to figure something out here, and he will not get in contact with me. He's deleted and blocked all my numbers. He's blocked and deleted me on Facebook, the same as the rest of my family. My goodness. So, have you ever been able to tell him I'm pregnant and this might be yours? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. He did get that information. Yes, because yes. I was with him at the time I conceived London. Right. So you were with him at that time. Then you moved on to Mr. Mitchell. Yes, Your Honor. So at what point do you two get engaged? We were in Indiana with um, a family member of Mr. Mitchell's, and he took me on a... Mr. Mitchell took me on a walk, and we were under a beautiful bridge, and he proposed to me. So he proposed to you, and you said yes. Yes, Your Honor. Even in spite of this paternity question? Yes, yes. Your Honor. The paternity was in the very back of my mind. How old was London when you proposed? Um, I was still pregnant with London. Oh, you were still pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. But now you are engaged, but London's born. And now that London's born and you're looking at the features and you're comparing the features, you think it's Mr. Mitchell, but Mr. Mitchell and Miss Pummel, your cousin, you all starting to have doubts. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Because of the fact that there was the overlapping, mm -hmm. that there was more than one person that was 
being slept with at the same time. And the, the fact that, I mean, they argue and it, that has been said. We don't know who the father is, you know? So, Mr. Mitchell, how do you feel as you hold London to, to have so much love for this baby but have so many questions? I've, I've been there for her the whole time, just taking care of her, so I've grown attached, and I don't know if she's mine or not, though. So, as much as you are hoping she is, the truth is you really don't know. I really don't know. Right. I want to know, though. Well, I think I've heard all that I need to hear. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. Okay. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Loman versus Mitchell, when it comes to 10-month-old London, Leona Loman, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Mitchell, you are not the father. Miss Loman, I can tell that was not the news you were expecting to hear. No, Your Honor. <laughs> Are we certain? Is your ex London's biological father, or is yes, there another Honor. possibility that we just have not spoken about no, yet? No, Your Honor, there is no other possibility. Mr. Mitchell, I'm so sorry I couldn't give you the results you wanted. So now we have to figure out where we go from here. But we've got to now do the right thing. Mr. Mitchell, you have formed a beautiful bond with the baby. I know you said this relationship was on the line. Where do we go from here? I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna stay her dad. You want to still stay in her life? Yes. And be her dad. Okay. <laughs> Let's figure out how we do that. Because it is easier said than done. So you want to try to make it work with Ms. Lohman? Yes, Your Honor. Good. Well, with that said, Ms. Lohman, is there anything you'd like to say to Mr. Mitchell? He's been wonderful to your baby. I want to tell you that I'm sorry and I love you. I love you too. <laughs>